Hi, my name is Judy Friedman, and I'm chairperson of PACE, People's Action for Clean Energy. It's an organization that is devoted to the promotion and development of renewable energy, uh, energy efficiency, and conservation. Uh, it's also uh, an organization that is uh, vehemently, uh, I won't say violently because I'm a peaceful, loving person, but absolutely uh, working against nuclear power and nuclear weapons, which we feel is a very, very, very dangerous source of energy. We're very concerned about the use of coal and oil and natural gas also because of the effects of uh, of these uh, fuels on our cancer and asthma rates. As I'm sure many of you know, we have very high cancer rates in this state and very high asthma rates. And one of the causes is the, uh, the energy uh, types of, type of technologies that we use. Um, I'm happy to say that um, I myself in our home am lucky enough to use clean energy, uh, which is really squeaky clean, and that's energy from the sun. Today we have uh, a fine gentleman who is an expert in uh, the technology of biodiesel fuel. And this is a very, very exciting technology. And this fine gentleman not only uses it, but he also makes it. So his name is Nevin Christensen. Nevin, can you tell us how you got into making and using biodiesel fuel? Yeah, it's been, uh, I've learned quite a while ago to just pay attention to what the universe tells me to do. And uh, at, someone came up to me one time and said, oh, you have diesel tractors, you could run them with vegetable oil, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yeah, right, and lunatic fringe, okay. Then I ran into somebody at the dump and he said, you gotta come over and smell my exhaust. And he was driving a little Volkswagen diesel and running it on biodiesel. I was like, okay, that made it quite real. Uh, then at a, we, I run a farm and we did an Earth Day celebration and I bought five gallons of biodiesel from a fellow there that was you know, selling the stuff. Dumped it into my John Deere tractor, scared to death that it wouldn't run again, that Oof. it might blow up. <laughs> and it was like, that tractor has to run every day or I have to shovel a lot of manure and stuff by hand and that would be bad. Uh, got on the tractor and what I noticed is that, first thing I noticed is that little puff of black smoke that often comes out of a diesel when you step on the throttle, pretty much disappeared. And uh, the engine sounded quieter, and I thought that's just my imagination, but apparently not. Engines run more quietly, smoothly, pollute less. Uh, I just fell in love with this stuff. Then eventually I, someone asked if they could do a workshop at my farm teaching people how to make biodiesel. Uh, we had over 75 people show up. The Connecticut Solar Association well, what, did this what workshop. What exactly is biodiesel? Is, right. it, is it, I mean, I, can I just go sure. and go to the dumpster and take it out and put it in my car, or what do I have uh, to do? To make biodiesel, no. Uh, we can get into running cars on pure vegetable oil later. Di we'll keep that separate for now. Biodiesel is made from uh, vegetable oil. Uh, a great book. We'll do this. From the Fire to the Fuel Tank. <laughs> the author is Josh Tickell. He went to study alternative energy, or alternative agriculture, somewhere in Europe, can't tell you right now, and watched a farmer dump vegetable oil into his tractor and drive down the road. So that's where he got started. And he's been one of my mentors. I've seen him at conferences. But biodiesel is made from vegetable oil. And I use three ingredients when I make it. I pretty much take 50, about 50 gallons of vegetable oil. Uh, so do you make it in your kitchen? Uh, in my workshop. Uh -huh. I've made the first batch could be made in a kitchen, a little test batch in a blender to see, make sure the formulas were right. And I did that one liter of uh, rotten old vegetable oil. This is the used vegetable oil from Fryolators that restaurants usually have to pay a lot of money to have it taken away. So they're pretty happy to give it to you. Uh, test batch, you use a liter of that, 3.5 grams of lye and 10%, so 10 milliliters, I suppose, or something like that of methanol. Mix it all up and walk away and some number of hours later if you've made the correct batch uh, about the bottom 10 or 20 percent will be a dark liquid which is glycerin the top is somewhat ginger ale colored and that's biodiesel wow and that can be dumped you know it needs to be filtered but it can be dumped into any diesel vehicle with 
absolutely no modifications to the vehicle well, and Ma drive down the road. Nevin, would you please tell our audience how you got here tonight? Yeah, we came in my 1990 uh, Mercedes diesel 300D that uh, is running on not quite pure biodiesel because it's bought on some bio, running on biodiesel I purchased. Uh, the fellow I purchased it from blends one gallon of petroleum diesel with 999 gallons of biodiesel to get a, a tax blending credit. Is there so, a place where people can buy biodiesel? There are no pumps that I'm aware of in Connecticut. There are, there's one in Holyoke is the nearest one I've heard of. I think we'll see more and more. There are some in Maine, Vermont, Europe, all over the place. They're way ahead of us in this technology. Uh, and about how much does it cost, would you say? Purchased with road taxes and everything. Last time I think I paid three thirty nine a gallon. So it was on par uh -huh. with uh, petroleum diesel. Uh -huh. And that's with you know, none of the subsidies the oil companies are getting. So uh -huh. if we eliminated those, uh -huh. oil biodiesel would uh -huh. be uh -huh. right there doing its thing. Uh -huh. uh, how does it smell? It's lovely. Uh, it's <laughs> very clean. Um, if you're the store bought stuff, that's the stuff I've been buying has been made out west, World Energy Corporation. World, okay, World Energy Corporation. World Energy. Can you yep. Google that and yes. find out about yep. it? And World. probably worldenergy.com. Worldenergy.com. I believe it's a subsidiary of Gulf Corporation. That's, you know, I believe, not 100% sure. And is Willie Nelson involved in this too? Uh, yeah, Willie Nelson has lent his uh, fame to. Uh, they're marketing Bio Willy. Uh, it's uh, yeah, he's cute, and it's a what's called a B20, which is a 20% mix. You can mix biodiesel with petroleum diesel in any proportion. B1 would be 1% biodiesel. Uh, B20 is 20% biodiesel. B100 is pure biodiesel, and a diesel engine will run on any mixture without knowing the difference. But as soon as you start mixing it, B5 and beyond particulates, pollution, uh, and all the other emissions go dramatically down. Doesn't it help your improve your motor? I've heard that it's, uh, the, if you can even use it, if people are using it in as a fuel, a home heating fuel yeah. too, right? Mm -hmm. And isn't it, doesn't it work it's well? It's a, a much cleaner burning fuel. Uh, pollution goes way down. Uh, early on, I read that biodiesel, you should, it has 5% le fewer BTUs per liter gallon. Uh, so in theory they were thinking fuel mileage would drop slightly or power would drop slightly. Uh, the opposite seems to be true uh, in that and probably mostly attributed to the fact that it's a much better lubricant. Its lubricity properties are way higher than petroleum diesel. So what a local rubbish company that has begun using it in their fleet has found a 4% increase in mileage. A local, is, it, is that Payne's? That's Payne's, yep. Payne's, Payne's and rubbish. They're, yep. they're in uh, in Simsbury? They do, do a lot of surrounding towns. Yeah, one of their uh, garages That's is in Simsbury. P-A-I-N-E-S, and yep. they're doing a great job Wonderful using folks. biodiesel mm -hmm. for their rubbish pickup. Yep. Wonderful. Yep. Uh, and, and so are you saving money by using biodiesel? No. Uh -huh. uh, you know, if I just buy it outright. I, some of my machines I run off-road, so I would I'm allowed to not pay road taxes on it. I don't really care. For me, it's it's not saving money so much as just promoting this. When I make my own, I certainly save money. When I make my own, it costs me sixty-five cents a gallon to 65 produce. Sixty-five cents a gallon mm -hmm. to make your own to produce your own biodiesel, biodiesel fuel. fuel. Yep. That sounds like a lot less than uh, a war in Iraq, which we do believe is one of the reasons that we're mm -hmm. in Iraq. I'm yeah, I'm and pretty firmly I, convinced of that. And if we can do homegrown biodiesel, that's a very exciting, it's a very mm -hmm. exciting opportunity for our farmers, I would think. Uh, the next book that I didn't bring tonight because I've lent it to someone, uh, Josh DeKell wrote, is called Biodiesel America. Great one. Uh, he lays out, you know, what a biodiesel economy could do for our farmers and everybody says, oh, well, if you start using soybeans to make biodiesel, you know, our feed prices for animals are going to go way up. Turns out that it would probably be just the opposite because usually soybeans are crushed, the oil is taken out and used separately, and then the rest of the remaining part of the soy is used to feed animals. So it, he's actually looking that it may actually 
decrease the But aren't there other uh, products we could oh. use besides oh. soybe soybeans to sure. make biodiesel? There are 40 plus different plants like that can could be grown. Like can you name some of them? Yeah, the one that would probably be most readily grown right in our area is canola. Uh, all over Germany, you know, various places in Europe, you see these little yellow flowers. It's in the mustard family. And for our climate, that would be the one that would produce the most gallons per acre. And just think, we are losing Connecticut farmland mm -hmm. very, very, very quickly. Our farmers are not making money, and the farmland is going to developments and golf courses, and this would help bring in income for our farmers. Mm -hmm. Be very exciting. Yeah. And then one of the main reasons as to how I got into it, uh, carbon neutral is big for me. Uh, when you burn biodiesel, it spews carbon dioxide, because as any combustion process does. But then as we grow the next crop, plants breathe oh. carbon dioxide. So they suck all of that carbon dioxide right back out of the air. And it's not thawing icebergs and drowning polar bears and things like that. So I feel really good driving down the road knowing that you know, I'm not contributing to global warming with the fuel I'm burning in my car. Other things in my life, probably some things, yes. Speaking of but. bears, uh, biodiesel is so <laughs> safe that we did have, I did hear about one problem. I think a gentleman had a problem with the biodiesel in his car and a bear. Yeah, he was actually running straight vegetable oil in his car. Uh, and uh, the bear decided it wanted to try to get into his Volkswagen and <laughs> help himself to so some of that oil. Yeah. So this is a fuel you can actually eat instead yeah. of poisoning you, giving you cancer and um, asthma. You could <laughs> they call it, you know, as far as in the environment, it's de described as more biodegradable than table sugar and uh, less toxic than table salt. Wow. I spilled some on some weeds out in front of my workshop one time, filling a tractor with a can, and it was like, ugh, you know, and if that had been petroleum diesel, the next day those things would have, or a few hours later, they would have been brown, dying, dead. The next day, they still looked a little greasy. Day after that, a little greasy, but less greasy. A few days later, bright green, perfect, beautiful. Wonderful. And uh, another adventure, and I finally bought a good electric pump to move all this stuff around, but I used to siphon and pump my hand and pour and spill. Uh, and one time I was siphoning some, and I got some biodiesel in my mouth. And yeah. normally, you know, gasoline or petroleum oh. diesel or anything is like, you know, you just want to die. Oh. This was like, I could have swallowed it without gagging, and it was just fine. You know, it was okay. So it's really so far less toxic. Around marine environments, I mean, it would be marvelous. It's just, this just is a the, marvelous this thing. This is a way to go. Sal, this is Sal Mengiari, and he's with the Citizens Awareness Network. And Sal, do you, <laughs> how do you think this sounds? Well, it sounds wonderful. And, and one of the things that struck me is that the restaurants, the donut shops, McDonald's, they mm -hmm. pay mm -hmm. to have this grease mm -hmm. dumped somewhere. And, yeah. and, and you, you, you should be able to go to McDonald's and get some McFuel. <laughs> well, I've, <laughs> Mc be, you know. well, I've heard that McDonald's isn't the best because they've perfected the art of getting the fuel into the food, or the oil into the food. But uh -huh. Yeah, but no, most restaurants are thrilled to you know, yeah. give it to you. And there there should get be it. a pretty good supply of mm -hmm. it there. A friend of mine drove... always constantly generated yeah. through the food industry. Yeah, definitely. Uh, that supply hopefully will dry up soon. You know, yeah. I would like to see enough people making it to just recycle all of that. Right now, I believe it's... I've heard it's a lot of it is trucked to the Midwest and sprayed on the food in the feedlots. And it's like not mm. so tantalizing. Mm. Yeah. A friend of mine drove to Utah and back in his Volkswagen that had been converted to run on pure vegetable oil uh, for $14. He sucked up oil along the way Oh, uh, wow. res various restaurants. He did have to buy $14 worth of food wow. to make it, fuel to make it wow, back from Utah. that's though. wonderful. So. Um, also, Nevin, uh, not only are you uh, a very fine farmer uh, <laughs> and a biodiesel expert, but now you've done something else that I think is very, very commendable. Nevin has uh, been part of the new and wonderful Connecticut Energy Rebates uh, Program. And this is something I hope every one of you look at is the Connecticut Energy uh, Fund uh, is a very exciting organization which uh, will help uh, give rebates to people who put solar electric systems 
on their homes or businesses. Uh, you can get rebated up to 50% of the cost of your system if you use their eligible solar installers. And this booklet is from the Connecticut Clean Energy Fund, and you can go online and uh, learn about them. Um, Nevin has taken advantage of this wonderful situation. Uh, photovoltaics is different than uh, solar hot water or passive solar. Photovoltaics means solar electricity. And this is a piece on what happens. You have a panel, the sunlight strikes the panel, uh, electrons are activated, they generate e electricity, that's DC electricity. It's, uh, you then have an inverter that converts it to AC electricity, and it goes to your home to run electric lights and refrigerators and uh, whatever else you have. It's a very, very exciting technology. We should, Nevin should not have to spend his own money, because he's paid for 50% of this, on this technology. This technology should be coming via our utility. Instead of oil, coal, gas, or nuclear, we could have solar panels not only on our homes, but on all the big box developments that are all over our state. Flat roofs, open to the sun, no trees, on parking lots, shading our cars so our cars are cool and the roof would be generating electricity. We have an article here from the New York Times that's titled, The Homeowner's Revenge, <laughs> selling, <laughs> selling electricity to the utility. And the Clean Energy Fund will rebate uh, you if you are part of the grid. In other words, if you use more electricity, if you sell, if you don't use all the electricity that you generate, it's sold back to the power company and they have to pay you for it. Of course, before you do <coughs> your electric installation, you should lower your demand. And the best way to do that is, first of all, to install compact fluorescent light bulbs. These bulbs use far less energy and would eliminate the lead for 120 nuclear power plants if everyone in their, this country simply changed the light bulb. These light bulbs are cheap. I just got this one at Walmart for 99 cents, and they last 13 times longer than a normal light bulb. So this is a win-win, and if you use them, you lower your energy bill just like that. So we really recommend it. Uh, Nevin, tell us about your experience installing uh, solar electric panels uh, at your wonderful farm. Okay. Uh, it was quite an adventure. I, for years I had dreamed about doing this and then uh, I finally was economically able to do it and take advantage of the rebate system. Uh, I wrote a letter to several of the certified installers from the Clean Energy Fund and just introducing myself, sending out pictures of my house plans, the farm uh, availability for photovoltaics. Uh, I think I sent four. I heard back from two. One came to the farm and then months later had not responded in any way, shape, or form. Then a brand new They're installer. They're very overworked. They are incredibly overworked. They're and very yay, overworked. You know, I'd like to see many, many more installers uh, come online, uh, and I think they will, but they're, they are making sure they know what they're doing, and that's a good thing. So I met this guy, Glenn Barisi from Solar Bright, who uh, and that's solar, S-O-L-A-R-B-R-I-T-E. Correct. Does not have a website yet. He needs one of those. But uh, we talked and came up with some plans. And initially, I, we looked at my house and a couple of buildings on the barn. And we decided to go with the barns because it was a commercial venture. The and what direction do they face? They both face within five degrees of perfect that's, south. That's very yes. important that yes. it face in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you w mount it on the roofs. I rebuilt a roof and I had a pavilion that had a recent roof on it. We were going to put a system on each one of those. Then somebody came by and said, you don't want to poke holes in your new roof, do you? And I said, well, not really. So then we started talking about ground mounting them and realized how big they were going to be and there was not really a convenient spot. So I have this huge chicken coop that's 40 feet by 80 feet with a slight 
slightly sloping roof. It slides, slants slightly to the north. And I thought, you know, the chicken coop that we're famous for with our backwards eggs art on it will draw a lot of attention if we fill it with solar collectors. And so right now we have, uh, it's a 12 plus kilowatt system, two big banks of collectors a on 12 racks. kilowatt system, that's yep. quite a large system. It's, uh, we didn't fit the rules. We were uh, out of the box going for this one too. So we pushed everybody a bit in a learning curve and what paperwork had to be done and where we had to go and what audits had to be done, et cetera. But now uh, they're on the building. We fired them up the other day. And this is in them. West Simsbury, West, Connecticut yeah. on, at Flemig Farm on West Mountain Road, right? Correct. And you yep. can see it from the road. You oh, can see time. this wonderful <laughs> big news system. Right. Yeah, we're trying to as well. trying to yeah trying to make a big splash. We have to have a big ribbon cutting ceremony. Invite all politicians and lots of people. Sometime. And it, and it will Church. be connected to the grid. So when Nevin is making more power than he's using, it will go to his neighbors. Actually, that's what happens, and he will get a credit on his bill. Mm -hmm. Can't wait for that. <laughs> we have to finish the town inspection, then it has to be blessed by the power company, which you know is a, a given, and then we can turn it on and leave it on. And uh, pretty exciting. That's great. And there's systems like this all over the state of Connecticut. Staples has just put up a huge new system. Barrett Outdoor Advertising has a huge system. And small home homeowner, uh, homeowners have smaller systems too. It's a win-win. I call it feel-good electricity. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what do you think, Sal? About I think it's wonderful, and it's um, it, it. I remember a, a number of years ago, I was visiting my sister down in Florida, and I was curious. I mean, it's so hot down there all the time. The sun's just pounding on you. All these people have these swimming pools that they never swim in and their pumps are running all the time, they could just have solar, just for the swimming pools. <coughs> we would Give save a tremendous them. amount of electricity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now that we have to be air very sure that people understand that there are different kinds of solar electricity. Mm -hmm. Nevin's talking about, uh, about solar power. Nevin's talking about solar electricity. I think, Sal, what you're talking about is solar thermal, solar hot water. And even in Connecticut, what you're talking about is a very viable idea. We could extend, if you have a pool, extend your swimming system uh, time by two or three months if you had a solar thermal system yes, such up, as you up described. Yes, up here where, it, up where here. it's cool, but down there it's warm and they have their pumps. It's the pumps, mm -hmm. the electricity ah. that are running the pumps and ah. their air conditioners I for their see. house. Oh, perfect. Constantly. Mm -hmm. yep. mm -hmm. And it's probably that way across the whole southern half of this country. Right. It doesn't, it's just... And there's, you don't see solar panels. Yeah. Well, I think it, it's... It, I it's don't understand why. Why is that, Nevin? I, uh, <laughs> one of my famous sayings, I think it's all about the money. <laughs> and what do those, you mean by that, those, Nevin? Uh, I, think, thing. I think the people that have been selling us power, uh, the people that have been generating the power have been in charge, and hmm. they want to keep making their money by selling their product. So what can um, we do? What can, we can, what can citizens do to make a difference? If, uh, Energy saving light bulbs, save electricity. We are so wasteful as a society. It's just ridiculous what we waste and how we can save stuff. I got to throw in one little part. Another book, my last book, Winning the Oil Endgame. Uh, it, it's written by, a oh, I'm sorry, I'm supposed to hold it up for a while. <laughs> written by Amory Lovins uh, from the Rocky Mountain Institute, a think tank. He's de dealt with hypercars, ultralight vehicles, et cetera. In this book, the graphs are way too much for me. I'll have to read it two or three times, but he pretty much lays out a plan where the United States could be oil free uh, by the year 2030 if we just, with just a little bit of political will and letting the free market system take over and do its thing. Yeah, because this is a problem. Our uh, subsidies uh, to the oil, uh, coal, and nuclear natural gas lobby. I mean, mm -hmm. we are not paying the true price of oil, especially oh, if we include the war. Right. Well, it's it's just it's like gold. But mm -hmm. but with subsidies, and we hope that we'll get more subsidies for things like solar. But there is well, something that people can do that I think is very 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 important. And that is, right now, what people can oh, yes. do is to <laughs> sign up for clean, green energy. Cl Connecticut clean energy options. Please, if you do nothing else, if you can't afford solar right now, 
you can't do biodiesel right now. You can do something if you use electricity at all. You can sign up for a green energy option through either CLNP or UI. You'll get a little pamphlet in your utility mailing. You can do it that way. You can go online. And what it does is you end up paying for clean, green energy through Sterling Plant or Community Energy that's landfill, it's wind power, and you will be putting your money not toward nuclear, not toward coal, not for natural gas, not, not toward oil, but for clean, green energy. So please, please sign up for green energy and look at Connecticut clean energy options. And towns are having races trying to mm -hmm. see who will sign up the most people through the utility for this green option. And if 100 people from a town that signed up sign on, that town will get a free, free installed one kilowatt solar electric system on any public building. And right now, I think West Hartford has, uh, is way ahead. I think New Haven's way ahead. Westport signed on. Portland signed on. And it's a very exciting, it's a feel-good race oh. for solar electricity. You don't hear much about it. <clears throat> I don't know why it's not promoted more, or it's not in the newspapers, or on the radio, or on the TV. I mean, so well, that's why we're doing this show. Uh, I know it. It's a <laughs> yeah, shame. It's a shame because it's this is something anyone right. can do who buys electricity. And it costs a little bit more. It costs maybe a uh, McDonald's meal. Do you want asthma, cancer, month, pollution, month, yeah. terrorist yeah. attacks, or <laughs> can you afford a McDonald's meal or, you know, that so kind an of thing? It's five, very, very. Six dollars a month. Very, five or six, seven dollars a right. month. Very, very little for clean, green energy. So, Nevin, do you want to wrap up with some thoughts or what to do or solutions or sell? What, what more can we do? Well, I think if everybody just takes little steps, looks at their own lifestyle and any little thing, change one bulb, just any little step, and it's going to be millions and millions and billions of little tiny steps. Uh, as Biodiesel America, he describes, there's no one, biodiesel is not the golden silver bullet but it's part of the silver buckshot that's going to correct our nice. situation here. Nice. So nice. everybody can do a little something and it will make an incredible difference. And Sal, you feel writing legislators, calling legislators is very, very important. Yes, I, um, I, kn I, know, I know all about all these little things that everybody can do and it all helps and it, it's sort of, I don't know, I, I want to see something bigger, stronger, <laughs> yeah. harder yeah. And, and I think we need to call our legislators we need to talk to our, even our town select, we need to talk to all of our officials and let them ho not know how we feel, let them know that we're fed up and that we want change. The technology is available, it's been online, and we need to start promoting it and pushing it. Thank you, I think you're absolutely right and mm -hmm. very, very good. <laughs> Thank you, thanks for those who listened too.